Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Career Foundry online event. Um, this is a career talk event, and this evening we are joined by Gayla Thompson and Bridget Wu. Now, I know that we've got a lot of people joining this evening. If you just want to drop your name in the chat on the right-hand side, we'd love to see all um, who's joining this evening and also where you're from. Um, so don't be a stranger. Just drop it in. We want this to be as interactive as possible, so please do that. Before I give the floor to Gail and Bridget, I just want to briefly introduce Career Foundry. So we are an online school and we teach anybody um, skills in tech from scratch. So we offer at the moment um, four or five career change programs in UX design, UI design, web development, digital marketing and data analytics. And there's a couple more to come. And um, like I said, we take people from absolutely scratch. We teach them in demand skills with uh, our dual mentorship model and career specialists and everybody um, behind them and help them land their dream job in tech. So I see a couple of people already joining. Hi, Susan from San Francisco. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, Bridget did um, one of our programs, UX design program, and has now landed a job at Accenture in New York City. And we're once again joined by Gayla Thompson, who is a career specialist here at Career Foundry. Um, I don't want to speak too much, um, but uh, I just want to say that we've got the chat on the right hand side. So please do ask questions as we're going along. As I said, I want to make this um, we want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, and with that said, I, I think I'll, I'll disappear into the background and I'll hand it over to Gayla and Bridget to introduce themselves. Over Thank to you, William. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. And thank you, Bridget. I know everyone's excited to hear about all about you and your journey. Do you want to maybe just briefly introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hey, everyone. Bridget, um, currently a design experience analyst at Accenture. Um, it's a very large global um, consulting firm. So we help companies um, with a lot of things, not just UX design. It could be business strategy, it could be um, uh, more tech-related things like moving your services to the cloud. Um, so there's a lot that Accenture does, and I just happen to work in the uh, UX uh, part of the company. So Very exciting. Um, can you tell us, that, is it just a job title, or do you do something different from straight UX design because your title is Design Experience Consultant? Right. So being a consultancy where... Um, we do a lot of different things. Um, sometimes, well, ideally, my projects, when they come to me, um, ideally, I'm just, you know, I'm creating like wireframes, I'm building things, um, but it's not always the case. Uh, depends on the client, their needs, what the project is. It could be the very beginning of a project where you're trying to scope out um, what do I even want to make? Uh, what are my, you know, minimum features I want for my um, MPV, my minimum viable product? Um, and it could be maybe like the user testing part of the process. It could be the actual building parts. So you just have to kind of go with the flow. But even if I'm doing something kind of outside my comfort zone, which is, um, you know, going in Figma and building something, at least I'm learning, you know, some other part of the process to make me a more well-rounded uh, consultant, so. Very exciting. Yeah. Uh, so I know everyone would love to hear a little bit more about your background. Can you tell us about what you were doing before? Definitely. Um, so I am from California. Um, I study psychology out in the Bay Area. And then um, after that, I decided I didn't want to go to grad school for psychology. So, but I always had a, a passion for fashion design. So I thought, if I'm going to try it, I'm going to do it now. So I studied that for a couple of years. And that is what led me out to New York. Um, my first job in bridal design um, brought me out here. And I was doing that for a very long time. I eventually also transitioned to the production side of things where you know, design is, uh, you know, where you create your designs, you see them walk down the runway. But after that, production takes over to mass produce the designs and ship them to your stores, right? Because if you can't get your product to the stores, you don't have a business. So <laughs> they're very much like two sides of the same coin. You need both to be successful. Um, so I did that for a very long time. But, uh, you know, there was like some I guess, issues with like the overall fashion industry that I had and just like personally, um, I felt like my career growth and, you know, to be honest, like the pay wasn't great. 
Um, but, you know, at the same time, I was like doing what I wanted to do. So that kind of, you know, kept me going for a long time. But then when COVID hit, we were stuck at home and I had to go back into the office like three months after quarantine started. That's when it really kind of put a magnifying glass on all those issues. And I really made me think like, is this really what I want to do long term? You know, especially like not being in a job where I can work remotely, even like part of the week. Um, and I literally Googled, you know, how to get out of fashion. And I came upon all these articles <laughs> where it's like, I used to write about fashion, but now I write about something else. I'm like, well, that's great, but it doesn't apply to me because my skill set was so specific to apparel. I couldn't just switch industries. And so I started um, looking at um, maybe it's just like up and coming, you know, hot careers and UX design was one of them. And I immediately wrote it off because I thought it's a tech job. I don't think like an engineer, um, you know, let's like look at something else. Um, and I talked to uh, friends who were close to me. One I had known since college and another one who I met through my husband's MBA program. She wanted to pivot her career and wanted to use the MBA um, as a stepping stone and she successfully did that. So I really sought out her advice. And um, so it was between these two friends, um, it was actually my friend from college who works at Google who mentioned UX design. And she connected me with her UX designer on her team. And he said that some of the best designers he's ever worked with came from different backgrounds. So that kind of gave me like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll look into it further. And at, around the same time, I met another uh, woman who also came from fashion, had already pivoted into UX design. I was like, okay, success case. Um, and then when I delve into it more and I saw that UX design is kind of, you know, people from all different types of backgrounds where your previous background could really help you um, with your new UX career, I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. And so then it came to like, okay, but where do I go to learn about this? Um, <laughs> so after, you know, lots of research, um, looking up, you know, top UX programs, um, I decided to go with Career Foundry just because, you know, they were online from the get-go. Um, they weren't like other programs who all of a sudden, suddenly like had to scramble to convert their programs online. Um, they were already doing that. Um, I like that it was self-paced. Um, I could go as fast or slow as I wanted to. And it seemed um, really, really organized. Um, why, I mean, I didn't realize until after I signed up, but you know, they give you like the course material ahead of time. They even tell you this section will take you 30 minutes to read. And then the assignment will take you an hour or three hours to do. So I was really able to like, you know, break out the spreadsheet and like plan out day by day what I was going to do. And I think um, I did the UX immersion program and it's supposed to be like, um, I think you have up to 10 months to do it part-time. So with my spreadsheet, I had this aggressive goal of doing it in like five and a half months. I think full-time <laughs> you could do it five months. Um, so I was doing this on top of a full-time job, um, a family of two little kids. Um, so I ended up doing it in six and a half months like just weekends, nights, I was like really balls to the wall because I wanted to get out of fashion <laughs> at that point. <laughs> so I, I was really um, into it. But um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a crazy, you know, six or so months. And then the job prep, <laughs> which was like <laughs> my coursework got replaced by my job search, which was like another full-time job in itself, very exhausting. And um, yeah. after a lot of, I mean, we can get into more details there about that, but yeah, after a couple, two, three months, um, I did land my position at Accenture. Yeah, so. oh, that's just such a great story and so inspiring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, I like how you touched on people from all different backgrounds, a lot of times end up being some of the best UX designers because they're bringing in all this work experience. Um, so that's very encouraging. So you mentioned you did the UX immersion course. We do have one-to-one -one mentoring and one-to-one -one tutoring. And could you just tell us a little bit more about that program and, and maybe how you were supported throughout the program? 
Yeah, um, so I, for my intro to UX and immersion to UX, um, I had the same tutor and mentor. Um, the tutor basically would, um, I guess, grade my assignments. And then my mentor would come in for like the big assignments at the end of, I guess, the sections. Um, and so I think I had up, up to a hundred calls that I could schedule with my mentor. Um, you know, I didn't really use, I wasn't even close to using up all 100, but um, they were fantastic. Um, very good about saying, oh, hey, you know, in your assignment, you use this word, but the correct term is actually this or, and my mentor was really excellent. Um, she was very good about, you know, being um, hard on me in a good way, because, you know, she's trying <laughs> to push me to be like, hey, this is what it's like in the real world. And this is like my experience was like, so I know that, I mean, you're not the only one that, you know, they're guiding, so they can, they see the level of work that is expected and what everyone else is doing. So, you know, if you're not uh, up to par, they'll, they'll let you know. <laughs> but <in a> nice <laughs> way. Yes, because they're industry professionals. They have so much experience in UX. And so then getting that mentorship, um, it's really helpful. Um, so Career Foundry offers immersion courses, which you took. And then after that, they also offer specialization courses. And you took the UI course. Is that right? Yes, I did UI for UX designers. Um, I just knew the other two options. I think it was front end development and then something with um, voice technology, like Alexa type stuff, wasn't really up my alley. So, and I felt like, you know, coming from like fashion design, the UI um, just appealed to me most. Um, so yeah, I went with that. And so that was like a quick, I think four week, um, I guess, and way to end the program. A nice way to round it out even though i've been kind of practicing some like ui um, practices during the immersion part it was nice to get like a formal you know let's just talk about ui um, portion of it and i did get a new mentor um, who was more of like a ui designer instead of like a ux designer to like really guide me through the last part so for people joining us who don't know can you explain the difference between UX and UI? Um, I feel like a lot of people, like when you are job searching for UX or UI, a lot of the companies who may not know what UX is, like they'll confuse the two and they'll think what they really want is UI, which is user interface, like what you see on the screen. Um, but even then they'll confuse it with graphic design or like visual design. <laughs> so. I mean, in like the most like basic sense, UI is kind of what you see and you know, how do we like make things look pretty, but the UX is explaining, you know, the how and why we are using these colors, placing the things just so. So it's kind of like, you know, what I said about design and production being two sides of the same coin, you kind of need both um, UI to make it look nice, but the UX to uh, validate why you're choosing these colors, placing these buttons that way, or using an outline button for that case. So there's like a rhyme and reason to everything you are showing the user, but you know, you're doing it so well that they don't even know because it's such great UX. <laughs> yes, exactly. If, if, if something is really easy to use, nobody thinks about it, whether it's an app or a website, but when there are issues or frustrations, that's when you know it's, uh, it's bad UX. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So at Career Foundry, after you complete your coursework, then you could go into job prep, as you mentioned, and you have a one-to-one -one career specialist. Can you talk to us a little bit about the job prep course? Yes. Yeah, so um, that took another uh, four weeks. I think Career Foundry recommends that you maybe start that uh, maybe four weeks before you're done with your uh, UX or UI program, just so you finish everything at the same time, you can hit the ground running. Um, I think I ended up doing maybe two weeks before I was done. Um, so then the last two weeks, I was just focused solely on job prep, but you are paired up with a new mentor. So in my case, it was Gayla. She was my career specialist. And I love that Gayla had also 
done the Career Foundry program herself. So she was familiar <laughs> with the coursework um, kind of projects that we did. Um, so that was really nice. Um, they, yeah, they, the career specialists are very good about, you know, guiding you enough so that, you know, you are still the one doing all the work, right? They can't do everything for you. Um, but also being very encouraging, positive, making sure you're doing what you need to do, um, right? Keeping you organized with that spreadsheet of uh, your job tracker spreadsheet. Um, and, you know, if you have like a bad interview, you know, Shkela was there to like, you know, pick me back up or um, I, for whatever reason, I did not have to do a whiteboard challenge, but I know she kind of talked about like how she was prepping some of her other mentees um, with that as well. So yeah, they're really there to, to be your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so support with resumes, cover letters, case studies, yeah, everything. Um, all of my that. Website, my personal branding on my LinkedIn page, right? Making sure everything was consistent throughout. Um, yeah, and just giving me pointers on like, you know, getting my resume through the, the ATS scanner, things like the little logistical things you don't really think about, you know, so. Yeah. Yes, all, all of that. And like you said, a moral support, because it can be an emotional time when you graduate and then you start that job search. It's a little scary for people. Yes, for sure. <laughs> so when you started looking for jobs, we really focus on telling your story, telling your your pathway to UX and your transferable skills. Can you talk to us a little bit about how your past work experience helped you in UX design and helped you land that job? Yeah, so in my case, because I was in uh, fashion design, um, I had worked with Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop before. So just the idea of having this, you know, canvas with two panels um, where all your um, your functions are and the idea of like layers and you know how you create a design on a computer was um, familiar to me. So it was easy for me to pick up um, Adobe XD and Figma. And, um, you know, to, as I think one of the job prep exercises is like um, creating your like your elevator pitch, like, you know, what makes you so special. So like part of it was that I already had some transferable like you know tech skills but also the even though I was doing fashion design it's still um, pretty similar design process um, compared to UX you know I have to start with a sketch I make a prototype which is like a basic garment I will um, go through usability testing like putting the garment on a fit model asking her you know how does it feel what changes do I need to make I will iterate and make a new prototype and I'll keep iterating until everyone's happy and then we you know we showed on the runway right the product goes live um so that was kind of like the angle that i was working with um but even if i didn't come from design just having a basic any kind of work history um i could have you know played that up as well like working well with others or collaborating with others um above me below me across from me um just um you know just kind of navigating the office politics even, but just uh, being a general team player, uh, problem solving with others um, could have worked to my advantage as well. So there's always something. <laughs> yes, no matter where you're, you're coming from, whether it's retail, hospitality, architecture, you know, it could be education. Um, there's so many transferable skills that you have. And so if you're nervous about getting into UX, and you don't have the tech skills, like you said, Bridget, there's so many other transferable skills and you're going to learn the tech that you need, the technology yeah. in your UX design course. Exactly. It's um, that's like almost something easy to pick up. because There's so many, you know, YouTube <laughs> videos, tutorials to help you out. <laughs> but it's, yes. uh, it, it's easy to just uh, get the basics. So. So when, when students graduate from the program, they're, they're very excited and they've worked so hard to build their case studies, their portfolio site, their, like you said, the elevator pitch. We help students with LinkedIn and networking. And um, sometimes they are 
not really wanting to update or change any of their job application materials. Mm -hmm. Did you make any changes as you went through that uh, job search process? Yes, um, I think I went through 88 applications in the end. Um, the winning application was actually number 28. <laughs> Just, <laughs> but you know, the interview process takes a while, so you have to keep applying while you wait. But um, yeah, I definitely, um, if I could share my screen, I would show you my Figma file where I have UX resume, UX UI, UI, product designer, you know, like all these different like job descriptions that I was going for. And then I would, below that, I would have my cover letters for company A, company B. And yeah, you definitely, um, I definitely took the advice of, you know, looking at the job description, making sure my resume, my cover letter had some of those keywords in there sprinkled throughout so that it would get past the ATS scanner or the recruiter's eyes. So <laughs> <laughs> every little bit helps. Any advice to, um, to students or graduates who have created case studies and then they learn new skills or they learn more UI? Um, any advice on whether they should keep what they have or should they go ahead and put in all that effort to update those case studies? Oh, that's interesting. Because um, I feel like if, if you have like a new project that you're working on that you can create a new case study for, then you should definitely apply those new skills to that case study. But it would be, I guess, nice to have, keep the old ones just to show progression. Um, but if you don't have a new case study to do that compare and contrast, um, I might just because, well, one, do you have the time, the bandwidth to do that? Um, but two, I mean, yeah, if you learned maybe animation or better, you know, hierarchy. Um, yeah, definitely, if you want to restructure the way you do your case studies so it tells a better story, um, improve your visuals, maybe, yeah, I think it just is like a case by case basis. Yeah. Which um, reminds me, I should probably update mine, but I haven't. <laughs> 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 it's always a good idea to keep updating as you go. It, it's sort of like the UX design process, right? You create a, a product or you design an app, you put it out there, you get feedback, and then you go back and make a new iteration. And that's kind of the same thing when with your job application materials. Right. Yeah. Just as like you want to UX your um, application, your resume, you should keep your 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 site UX friendly as possible. So yeah. I should definitely take a look at my own site. <laughs> see what I can do. <laughs> so you mentioned you went through 88 applications, and I think that's very common. Um, did you have several interviews throughout that process as well? I had, um, I would say, three solid ones. The fourth one was scheduled, and then you know they said like, "Oh, we're gonna." Uh, push off this position to like the next quarter. We don't have the budget, so I'm not going to count it. Um, so yeah, so only three interviews. I didn't um, get through too many, but um, one was um, an interesting, um, he was kind of like a one-man show and his business was growing. He needed a junior designer. Um, the second one was with Accenture. And then the third one was with a um, design agency that had offices in Chicago and New York. And I had applied, I guess, to, to the Chicago one because I thought maybe it's COVID times, it could be remote, but that one turned out to be, they had to be in person in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but I was really trying to make it work. I was like, you know, I'll, I'll relocate, you know, temporarily. And then can I, you know, work remotely from New York? They're like, no, we're trying to build out our team. And I was like, okay. But, you know, we're, I still keep in touch with the recruiters sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Always good to stay in touch with recruiters, yeah, right? I think there's that, right? <laughs> so you got to yeah, build you your know, network, stay eliminate. in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about that interview process with Accenture, where you are now? Okay, so that one, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Um, I got emailed by the recruiter to just set up a call with her. And then I got on the call. She was 
she like went out of her way to be very friendly to like kind of put me at ease and um i asked her straight up you know do you have do you guys do like whiteboard challenges because that was something that was um giving me anxiety <laughs> she's like no actually we decide we're not going to do a wave that i was like oh phew thank you and then um, she asked me a question about um do you prefer working at a consultancy or like an agency type of environment and um i was like well you know to be honest i just i haven't worked at both so i don't have an opinion and um so i think uh you know if you don't know the answer to something in, in this case it was yeah, definitely be honest. Don't try to like fake it till you make it. <laughs> so, because like at that point, I hadn't understood the difference between agency and consultancy. So, um, yeah, I in that case kind of worked in my favor. And she was like, yeah, totally fine, you know. And like, next question was blah, blah, blah. So, obviously, after that, she gave me the green light for the next one which was a portfolio review with um, one of their designers, like mid-level designers. So I took um, my case study that I did from my UX immersion um, course, cause that was like the most like um, well-rounded kind of end-to-end -end, um, case study where I could show everything from, you know, the conceptualization to like user testing, iterations, you know, peer reviews, all of that, the whole nine yards. Um, and then he gave me the green light for the third and final interview, um, which was um, a chat with a senior designer. So this is interesting because the recruiter had said it's like a casual chat. Um, she made it sound very, very casual. And at the same time, I came across this girl on LinkedIn who had gotten um, a job through Accenture. So we were comparing notes. I was like, you know, um, did you also do three interviews where it was recruiter, mid-level, senior. She said, yes. In my last call of the senior designers, there were two of them. It was just me asking them questions, like really easy going. And I was like, okay, cool. I am in my mindset that I'm just gonna chat with this person. And then I got <laughs> on the call, it was one other person. She said, okay, well, let's, uh, let's take a look at um, your portfolio. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I still have my notes and my case study from the last interview on my desktop. It was fine, but <laughs> um, it was it was fine. So I would my uh, takeaway from that is to um, always be prepared <laughs> for like the worst case scenario and to also prep yourself for these interviews. Right at that point, I had kind of rehearsed the case study so much that I I knew the notes, the general like. Um, what am I going to say when I'm going to um, go to the next slide, things like that. Um, so yeah, that was kind of crazy. So that was the third and final interview. And then I got an email from the recruiter saying, hey, I'd love to talk to you tomorrow. And then that's when I got the verbal. So the whole process from when I submitted the application to the verbal offer was four weeks. Yeah, so and sometimes people get nervous if they don't hear immediately or they don't get offered the job immediately, but it's quite common for it to be a few weeks out. Yeah, I think it was two weeks before the recruiter contacted me. And even though she said, hey, if you ever have any questions, feel free to text me or email me. And I did have like this random question. I never heard back from her. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna show up at the second interview and hope that you know the other guy shows up, so. <laughs> yes, I yeah. think it's common. Recruiters are working with so many people and, so and that busy. happens and it's not personal. Um, no. So if any, anybody out there is experiencing that, it's, uh, it's kind of part of the process sometimes. <laughs> it is. And um, talking to some of my coworkers now and about their interview process, um, one of them said like, yeah, I wouldn't even be here if I didn't kept, keep bugging my recruiter because she was just <laughs> MIA. So if you feel something is off, you know, you're not going to be annoying if you keep, you know, even following up. So yeah, stay on their radar. So, yeah. so when something comes up, you're top of mind for them. Exactly. So, <laughs> so you mentioned that you reached out to someone on LinkedIn. I, I know that part of what we really encourage people to do is network. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of your efforts in networking? 
Yeah, uh, right. So when I was in my job search, uh, I was totally like on LinkedIn every day, several times a day. Um, I did use um, the other sites that Career Foundry um, recommended as well to um, to stop search for jobs. Uh, ultimately, it was LinkedIn that led me to Accenture. But um, yeah, just like you know, when you start uh, trying to connect with people through Career Foundry or just like UX people in general, that just kind of opens up like other doors. Um, that's how I found um, this other person who had just gotten a job at Accenture. She wasn't even like really part of my network, but she somehow showed up. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's really about, you know, putting yourself out there. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen those Amazon commercials where one is like Tiffany Black. She's, um, she has like really spearheaded like a bunch of like, initiatives and Amazon, and there's also this guy, um, I can't remember his name, but he's he's either deaf or blind, but he's a UX designer at Amazon, and I decided to look them up, and they're real, and I connected <laughs> with them on LinkedIn, and I was like, oh my gosh, thank you for accepting me, and it's just like putting yourself out there, and um, that one job, the one-man show that I didn't end up getting, you know, I... I had reached out to him through the, um, I guess, LinkedIn's like in mail um, feature. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what kind of got me on his radar, but it's not something I would have normally done. But I was kind of like, you know, what do I have to lose? You know, it's all you can do is like put yourself out there and ask, hey, look at me. And it's up to them to say, <laughs> yeah, or sure. So. Yeah, the worst thing that can happen is you don't hear back from them. So that's, yeah, keep putting yourself out there. Yeah. So that that's interesting that so you were doing all of these things to get hired. And now that you've been working in your current position, is anybody reaching out to you and contacting you maybe for informational interviews or uh, trying to connect with you on LinkedIn? Yeah, I've gotten a, a handful of people. Um, usually it's uh, Career Foundry uh, students um, who are reaching out. So that's why I'm showing up in their network. Um, and some people have reached out um, asking about Accenture specifically. So <clears throat> I'll either message them back or if they, you know, if they ask for like a 30 minute chat, I would do that as well. So it's basically I'm giving them the same information that I'm telling you guys. Um, so yeah, it's like a bunch of people who um, are in the program or they are thinking about doing some kind of program, you know, thinking of pivoting into UX and, you know, for those people who are kind of like on the fence about UX, I'm like, look, it's just like getting more crowded <laughs> to get into this industry. So if you're on the fence, I would just go for it. Um, <laughs> and in terms of like people who are already in it, then I'm just kind of sharing like, oh yeah, I remember like during the uh, program, the course we're at blah, blah, blah. So we kind of, you know, compare notes and, um, I think my just like overall advice is, um, well, they want to they want to know does Career Foundry prepare you well? And I would say yes. Everything that you're doing, um, the concepts um, that they're teaching you is every all everything I'm applying to what I'm doing now. Um, they ask me, do people look down on boot campers? And I haven't come across anyone who has had an ego and has said you know, I went to the Harvard of UX school, where did you go? Like, no one talks like that at all. It's not like people <laughs> sit around saying, oh, let's apply, you know, Fitz Law to this design. It's just, hey, what can we do to improve the hierarchy? It's very, like, friendly, welcoming. Um, so that's been really uh, refreshing and, you know, pleasant to discover. And um, if you're in the job search, I would just say, you know, you just got to keep keep trying because it will happen. If you put in the work, it will happen. Um, I've also had people who said, look, I know I don't have to work experience and I know I have a weak portfolio, but can you pass along my resume? <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> well, look, if you're having trouble, maybe try to improve those two areas first. You know, you've already... <laughs> You know what your weaknesses are. Um, you know what I see is exactly what the recruiters see. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you have to put in the work, and you can't just say I'm passionate about UX. You have to show that you've done some work, 
Um, and even if you have a weak portfolio, just have it out there. So you, you're showing that you're, you are trying to do something UX related. So. Yeah, I, I like how you touched on how friendly people are in UX design. So some industries, it's, uh, it's very competitive. And not that UX isn't competitive, but it is, it's more of a collaboration and supportive uh, community. Definitely. I've, um, you know, I, I'm starting a new career, so I'm like at the bottom of the totem pole again. But I've had people who are many levels above me say, hey, you know, I haven't had a chance to say hi to you. Because um, I'm part of a larger group in like the Northeast area. So it's not just um, New Yorkers. We have like a... Uh, quite a bit of people in Boston as well. Um, so I've had people in the Boston studio say, hey, let's just, um, you know, if you want, you can grab time on my calendar next week so we can chat, get to know each other. If you ever want like an extra set of eyes on your designs, I'm happy to help out. Um, yeah, everyone has been extremely friendly. Um, yeah, I just, I, I couldn't say more. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> It's such like a different environment from fashion. So. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of students, when they graduate, they've gone through this entire UX design process. And then when they get hired, they may or may not be able to do that full circle um, process. Did you experience that or how did that relate to your position now? Are you from conception to ship product or do you you like pop in at certain parts of the process? Yeah, that depends on the project. Um, some projects can be like over a year long where uh, the client comes in and says, you know, we want to make an app, but we don't know where to start. And so <clears throat> you, um, Accenture might take them, hold their hand essentially from the, you know, figuring out what we're going to do with this app, what we're going to include into uh having the product go live and then working on transitioning um, the maintenance of the app from our hands to their internal team. And then some projects might be like, we already have the app. We just want to improve this one flow within the app. Like the, uh, if it's like an e-com site, we want to improve the checkout flow. Um, so it really depends on the client. And with that, um, in terms of like the tools you use, that could depend on the client too. So for a new client where you're just kind of starting from scratch, we will recommend Figma. <laughs> but um, for another client, if they are using Sketch or I, one of my coworkers has to use UX Pin, which I had never heard and I still haven't come across yet. Mm -hmm. um, if that is what the client is using, then you have to get on YouTube and get yourself familiar with you know, whatever tool you're, they're using if you're not already using it. So yeah, it yeah. just depends. <laughs> and that's a great point because a lot of graduates are nervous. What if I don't know all of the tools in the job description or what if I don't meet every single point, you know, in the criteria and you're saying it's okay, right? And you just, you just learn it and you figure it out. Is that kind of what you're saying? Um, in terms of tools, I, I wouldn't do like a jack of all trades, master of none. I would maybe just master one of them that you like the best. Um, in my case, I really love Figma because going from Figma to XD or Sketch, like the functionality and the interface is similar enough that you could, you know, work, figure out your way once you get there. Um, but in terms of like thinking like, oh, if they listed three tools, I only know too, I would still apply. Like, you know, you don't know if these companies know the difference between all of them. <laughs> That's so true. Like, it's kind of like <laughs> well, our clients use these three tools, so we're going to list them. But maybe in reality, most of their clients are only using Figma. You know, you never know yeah. until you get behind the door. But yes, and still. you're such a good point. <laughs> if uh, if you learn one really well it's easy to pick up on the other tools. If you love XD, um, it's easy to pick up on Figma. If you love Figma, it's easy to pick up on Sketch. So I wouldn't let that be a deterrent in, you know, in applying. No. 
So we've heard so much about your story and, uh, and your new position. Can you tell us some things that you really enjoy about what you're doing right now? Oh, um, yeah, I always thought like actors had a great job because any role they take, they really immerse themselves in it and they learn something new with every, you know, film. So, um, yeah, being a, a UX designer where, um, I guess maybe in the agency and a consulting firm, you're working on so many different projects. You get to learn about a lot of different new things. Um, so I do like that. It can be very challenging. Um, one of my past uh, projects was in healthcare, which I was like, God, you know, if I had a nursing background, this would be up my alley, but this is so complicated. <laughs> and you know, it's complicated for everyone. You know, if you are having a hard time um, absorbing the material, you should definitely raise your hand and be like, hey, you know, because um, you're probably not the only one. But um, yeah, it's, it's been really interesting just to learn like, you know, about other things in life outside of like UX design. Um, yeah, I would say that's, that's a nice uh, side product. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. And you mentioned that it's okay to like raise your hand and say, I'm not quite sure about this. Yeah. Oh, is that, is that comfortable or is it a little bit scary when you first had to do that? Definitely scary. Cause I'm not really, um, I'm more of like an introvert. And if I'm having trouble with something, I'm the type of person to be like, okay, you know, once the meeting's over, I'm going to try to figure it out on my own, <laughs> like not say anything. But what I've noticed with, the more senior designers is that <clears throat> even during a meeting, um, if it, even if it ends up being a stupid idea, they're still going to try it out in live time. And just yeah. to like, you know, see if it does work because maybe someone else would chime in and be like, oh, but what if we tweak this one part and then suddenly the stupid idea becomes a great idea, right? Whereas I would have been like, oh, it's a, I'm thinking it's a stupid idea. I'm not even going to try. So like one fee piece of feedback I got from um, the healthcare project, um, because I was kind of, wasn't very talkative during our meetings, you know, my lead designer said, you know, because she had worked with, with me previously on a different project and she thought I did great. Um, so she kind of, you know, expected the same amount of like enthusiasm and participation. And then when I kind of fell flat, you know, her feedback reflected that. Um, because I was just uncomfortable with the material, but um, kind of looking back, I noticed like, yeah, everyone else was just as confused, but they were kind of talking it out with everyone else. And mm -hmm. even if, you know, your idea becomes a dead end, at least like you're trying. So I've noticed that with the senior designers, that they're always trying, putting things out there, just, you know, seeing what sticks. So. Yeah, that's one of the great things about UX is it's, you come from this point of being curious and then you collaborate and and that's how you bring ideas together. So I really like that point. That's, that's a nice point to make. Um, so we're getting close to time. Everybody out there, please start dropping your questions in the chat. Um, and while they're doing that, do you have any like last minute or advice for either new UX designers or for those considering getting into the UX field? Uh, I, I really enjoy it. It has been my, I feel like my true calling. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I definitely say go for it. I don't know. What do you have to lose, right? You only live yeah. once. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what some of these questions are. Um, let's see. So I want to come from graphic design and, uh, has 20 years experience in looking to transition into UX and UI design. Is this possible, even though they've been doing graphic design for 20 years? What, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, I feel like even, you know, from the tech side of things, you're probably coming into it more uh, experienced than I am. <laughs> I only touched, I only used Illustrator and Photoshop a little bit. Um, it wasn't like my day to day. So 
in terms of that, you could probably definitely transition well to UI design. And then, um, I mean, depending on what the job is, um, if it includes UX as well, then yeah, I think you're pretty, pretty good chances there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm a career changer as well, like you, Bridget, and uh, I had 20 years experience in education, and I'm so glad that I made that leap into UX mm -hmm. design. It's completely changed my life in like, so many wonderful ways. Um, so go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, another question that's coming up, and this is, this is very common in UX design where the job description needs you to have two plus years experience or, or something like that. And what do you do if you don't have that experience and you're brand new? Yeah, so that um, I didn't have any UX um, experience. I didn't even have internships. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not like a great example. Um, I really just had my resume, um, what I guess was a strong enough portfolio um, I mean, I did have the general work experience. Um, yeah, if you're having trouble, I guess in the beginning with my job search, I think I was only applying to like full-time positions. Um, and then when I kind of opened it up to more like internships and apprenticeships, um, that's when I started getting more calls. And um, my, uh, my job at Accenture actually started out as an apprenticeship. Um, that ended up being like full-time paid, you know, from day one. So it really worked out in my favor. So I would say like, don't be afraid to apply for anything and everything, but also, you know, like know what you won't accept. Um, I came across one that was a UX designer, content creator, and web developer. That it already had three job titles in one. <laughs> And then when I read the job description, there were like two additional, you know, jobs in there. And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, I'm that's a definite, you know, hard pass for me. But I, I know someone's gonna apply for it. But so I would also, you know, figure out like what's what's your, you know, hard pass. <laughs> yes. And those those positions where they they want you to be UX, UI, visual yeah. designer, developer, the unicorn. Um, the unicorn. It's it's so yeah. crazy. They ask for so much, and you know, a lot of these companies like don't even really know what they're asking for. So um, in that first month, you know, before I widened my net, I was okay with just applying to like my unicorn jobs, and at least I would get experience with um, knowing what's out there, um, being able to tell you know job descriptions that know what they're talking about versus ones that don't. So I was okay with that. But um, if you are having trouble, you don't have the experience, then, you know, I think Career Foundry recommends like doing some, you know, free work for, I almost, um, I was considering um, going to my um, hair salon because they have a terrible website. <laughs> <laughs> and being like, hey, could I redesign your site, you know, like for free, blah, blah, blah. So finding ways to like, you know, do um, actual work outside of project work is important. Um, I did do one UX challenge through Adobe out, uh, when the program ended. So that was, I guess, something and not technical, not, not technically an internship, but at least I have one thing that was outside of coursework. So can you, yeah. can you talk about that just a little so people have an understanding that there are so many opportunities to gain experience? Yeah, it was, um, I think it was done through Creative Jam, Adobe Creative Jam. Um, they have these challenges, I think, throughout the year. Um, they happened to do one that was in partnership with NASA. And you would, um, this one was specifically geared towards boot camp students. So that was great. We're all kind of level playing field. Mm -hmm. um, I think I found out through the Career Foundry Slack channel. So I ended up teaming up with another um Career Foundry student out in Houston. Um, so it was like just one week challenge and it was really fun. We had to create this educational tablet um, app for, you know, grade school kids to, you know, teach them about space and NASA. So it's really fun. Um, but we were also both working full time, so we could only do it, you know, <laughs> weekends and, uh, and nights. And so we didn't, um, 
we were not one of the finalists, but we did get, um, I think, six months of um, free creative suite for being one of the first 100 to turn into our assignment. So. <laughs> Yeah, so that, um, that's a great way to, to gain experience if you're not employed at this point in your UX design career. Yeah. Look look for opportunities. I love the idea of your hair salon. Their website <laughs> isn't the best. Yeah. And you know, just ask. You just ask people. Yeah. A lot of times they love to have the help. Yes, and uh, I think the Slack channel has um, a lot of people posting about things like, you know, I, I'm looking for a teammate for this, or I have an internship at my work, and blah blah blah. So, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's something we didn't mention is the Slack channel. So even though you're online, you have this huge community of students where you can collaborate and do projects together, uh, and stay in touch with people who are at the same point you are in the training, or maybe they're ahead or behind, and you can help them. So you're not alone, uh, even though it is online. Definitely, yeah. So I have another question here asking, uh, at Accenture, are there any UX researchers or do you incorporate any UX research work in your role? Uh, yes, so Accenture is interesting. Um, I guess the Accenture UX designers are more centered around like the actual building of the product, but we do have um, you know, other companies that we have acquired who might uh, handle the user testing or uh, Fjord kind of handles our, um, I guess, user research section of the um, process so that uh, ideally, you know, if Fjord comes in first, they'll conceptualize with the client, they'll figure out, okay, this is what we're going to make, this is our MPV features, and then gets handed off to the center designers who actually build. Um, not always the case. Um, sometimes you're working in tandem with Fior, doing the research with them. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, I think Accenture as a company is looking into having their own researchers as well, but I'm not sure. So as of right now, not really. <laughs> so it's, yeah, so it's not always exactly how you learn in school. Um, there may or may not be user research involved. Here's another question that we have. And if you guys, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We've just got a few minutes left. Um, so we'll make sure we answer all your questions. So here's a question. Is it common for uh, jobs to, or employers to want you to be a UX designer and a UI designer both? Um, I mean, my title and any interviews that I had that were always about like UX, but I also, I mean, we don't have like a strictly like UI designer. Um, we kind of treat, you know, they go hand in hand all the time so that you were always applying, you know, principles from both when we're working. Um, so I, I don't have like a clear answer for that because, you know, you're always using both. You're you're not strictly, um, at least the way we work, it's not like I'm just giving these, you know, really basic um, wireframes that are, you know, black, white, and gray, and then the UI designer comes in and brings in the colors. We're doing everything at the same time, so. So it really just depends on the position and, and the company and what they expect, yeah. but it really is, they you really do need to understand UI to enhance your UX. And if you're a UI person, knowing some basic UX can really help you. So uh, that's one of the great things at Career Foundry. You can get both. If you join the UX immersion program, then you can get the UI specialization and then you're set for both. Exactly. So let's see if we have any last minute questions here. Um, so how do you join the Slack channels? So when you, uh, join Career Foundry, you'll have access to many different Slack channels. And um, yeah, so that's how you that's how you get into the Slack channels. Here's a question, which which one of the courses do you suggest? Because we do offer things outside of UX and UI. Um, but between the two, what would you say, Bridget? Oh, um, I think for me, even though I kind of 
gravitate more towards uh, UI given my background. I really wanted to understand the uh, the how and why part of it. So I I chose UX over UI. Um, just because like with like design and production, I felt it was really good for me to understand both sides of the business um, to be a more successful you know employee. Um, yeah, so that's I mean that was my personal reason for choosing UX. Um, I also for me I felt like it not that it opened up more doors being UX versus just strictly UI designer, but I felt like it was easier to go from UX to UI than the other way around, if that makes yeah. sense. Yes, it does, absolutely. Here, here's a good question. What does a typical work day for you entail? Oh, um, that can vary from project to project, but, <laughs> and also how um, organized your lead designer is. Um, they will be in charge of like setting up the meetings. Um, so I think, um, Career Foundry, they talk about, you know, um, doing stand-ups with your developers. So my current project, we do have a daily stand-up at 9.30 where um, everyone gets on, the designers, the product people, delivery, developers. And we just talk about, yesterday I worked on this, today I worked on this, and I have no blockers or, you know, one thing that's blocking me is like, I, I need cl more clarity on this area. Um, and we'll look at the Kanban board, like everyone's tickets, just have these tickets, which could be one little thing, like make sure you include the X to cancel out this modal or something. Um, it could be for the designer, for the developers. And as you kind of move along, like I did this thing, it's ready to be quality checked. And then quality checks comes in and says, okay, this, Thing, checks out well it's kind of a way for everyone to, to have like their list of like chores and then to get all the chores done over to the you know <laughs> far right column as you progress along so like everything that career foundry kind of like touches upon like i'm actually seeing <laughs> so, which is kind of nice i'm like oh yeah i remember way back home they mentioned stand up um so yeah I'll have to stand up really quickly and then I'll have a working session with my design team where it's just very casual. We're all going to Figma and um, we'll take turns saying, hey, this is what I've been working on. This is what I want feedback on. Um, you know, we all just kind of work together, taking turns. And then we'll probably have some like heads down time. Um, we might have like an end of the day meeting to just check in or depending on if it's like a fast paced thing, you might have an end of the day. If it's not, then we might wait till like the next day to sh uh, share your designs again. And then a couple of days a week, we'll also have like afternoon working sessions with the client um, so they can see our progress. We can get feedback from them just so like we're not going off in a direction that they're not comfortable with. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just a lot of meetings, but um, a good lead designer will also give you enough heads down time and they will ask you do you guys want to have that end of the day meeting or do you guys want heads down time so mm -hmm. yeah that's important to not be meetings all day at some point you have to do design work <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so uh, we'll make this the last question because we're almost out of time are you a freelance person or salary based and also what advice would you give a beginner to go freelance or salary um, I am salaried. I've never done the freelance, even in um, fashion. So unfortunately, I, I don't have any advice there. Um, yeah, I just happen to be Sally the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, I'm going to ask William to join us and talk a little bit about uh, some scholarships or partial scholarships that we have at UX Career Foundry. Hi, Gayla. Hi, Bridget. Thank you so much for that. That was really insightful. And also thank you to the audience for all those great questions for Bridget and also for Gayla. Um, just a couple of things to say. Um, at the moment, we are currently offering a uh, career change scholarship for both our UX and UX UI design programs. So if you're thinking about that, we've put a little sticky note on the right hand side. 
If you click that, you'll be taken through to a program advisor where you can book a call and um, speak to our program advisors about the curriculum, about the dual mentorship model, or any questions that you have specific about the program. Um, they're super friendly and uh, they're on the calls waiting. Um, a, Another couple of things to say is that um, for anybody who is thinking about um, potentially UX design or UI design, we do actually offer a short course. It's a free short course. Um, it takes, I think, five or six days, um, and it's a really good um, entry point. So if anyone's kind of thinking about it um, but doesn't want to take the kind of the full leap into one of the main programs, we also offer a short course. And uh, whilst I'm here, I'll also say that we have a great blog. Lots of our students use it, but um, also um, We've got lots of great articles on um, UX design, UI design, um, but also some other topics on data analytics and um, digital marketing. Check that out. And um, also our YouTube channel. We've got some familiar faces there who are also talking a lot about the industry, but um, it's a great resource. So Bridget uh, Gayla, thank you so much for um, joining us this evening um, or this morning in New York. Um, that was really great. And thank you to the audience for all the great questions. And um, as I said, if you've got um, any more specific questions about the program, just book a call with a program advisor and, and they'll help you out. So um, that's everything for this evening. Thank you, Gayla. Thanks, Bridget. And um, we'll see you next time. Also, for anybody who's interested in Figma, on Thursday, we're hosting a skills workshop on Figma with Craig Hansen. We're going to be designing a surf app, uh, and that's uh, going to be a great kind of like first um, look at how to use Figma. So if you're not used to it, um, definitely check that out too. Yeah, I'm going to stop speaking now. That's enough. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> so uh, have a great evening, everybody. And um, yeah, see you next time. Thanks, Gayla. Thanks, Bridget. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>